Hello and welcome to the third part of this tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And um, in the previous episode, we made an object class. We finished making an object class, and we created an items class that has currently has nothing, and success, uh, successfully drew an object on our screen. Except it doesn't do anything. You know, you can click, move, press the keyboard, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, one thing I actually forgot to mention in the object class on the draw method when it says sprite batch dot draw uh, the argument you put in for rotation you want to put in math helper dot con convert uh, or actually two radians the reason for this is uh, our rotation is going to be in degrees because that's that's easier to work with, you know. When someone says, "Oh, turn 180 degrees," or or add three degrees to that, you know, you know what you're talking about. But you know, radians is based off pi, and we're just gonna, and that's how XNA reads everything. So that's their preferable uh, preferable rotation information way. So we don't want to be dealing like with oh, turn pi over two or pi over four. And, yeah, it's easier to work with uh, uh, degrees. So, other than that, uh, the next thing we're going to do is make a man class. So, our man class is going to be pretty much like our object class, except it's going to have movement and cool stuff like that. So, I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it man. And to inherit stuff from man, I'm going to put a colon and then put obj which was our object class so then we have to make a constructor man oops, public man and then we're going to put your arguments like uh, vector oh yeah I forgot to import all the using statements so just copy all the x and a using statements and then paste them in your class so now I'm going to make them constructor. So uh, when you're inheriting from another class, you have to make sure all the arguments are the same. So I'm going to do that right now. And then I'm going to put a colon to that and put base. And then put the position. OK, so that's our constructor. And then I'm just going to put position. Okay. Actually. I'm going to make these all public. Just so I can see them and work with them. Okay. So position equals POS, just like in our other uh, constructor. So that's that. And remember how we made all the methods or the update method, the load content method, and the draw method virtual. Well, the reason we did that was so we could override them. So now this is where it becomes useful. So we can do public override update. See? And then it, it does that. So based on update, this basically runs the original method that was in the class that you uh, inherited from. So it's still running this class at the end. But now it allows us to do more stuff. And right off the bat, I'm going to create a more some keyboard classes. I mean, keyboard objects. They're they're built-in classes, XNA framework. So I'm going to uh, put keyboard state keyboard and keyboard state previous keyboard. You may. You might be thinking, why are you putting two keyboard, declaring two keyboard variables? Well, the reason for this is, as you might have seen in the names, is I need a keyboard for the current key that's being pressed and the previous key that was pressed. So it's just useful to have. So keyboard, in, your, in my update method, I'm going to put keyboard equals keyboard with a capital K dot get state. So this will basically get the state the current state of the keyboard as of that frame and then I'm going to do previous keyboard equals keyboard 
and then I'm going to put all my all the rest of my code in between this. So it makes sense. So it's going to get the current state of the keyboard, run some code, and then get the previous state of the keyboard. So when it comes back around, and I want to get the previous state of the keyboard, it gets the previous state of the keyboard that it was last frame. So I hope you understand that. Uh, it's not that complicated. Okay, so next thing we want to do is create our actual logic. So uh, I'm going to put some, a bunch of if statements here. Oh. So if keyboard dot is key down, this basically checks if a key is down, and then we're going to put in the arguments keys dot, and then you can put whatever you, whatever key you want. I'm going to just use a uh, the WASD key since we're using the mouse as well. So if the W key, oops, if the W key is pressed, then something will happen. And in case the W is going up, we want the guy to go up. So we're going to increase his, actually decrease his Y. So position dot Y is minus equals speed. And you're like, oh, what, what is, what's speed? What's speed? You, you didn't say anything about speed. Well, we're going to create that right now. So I'm going to do float speed. And speed equals zero for now. Oh, that's dumb. OK, speed equals two. OK. So um, I'm not sure. Well, at least in video games and X and A, why? Zero, 0, the location zero, 0, is located on the top left corner of the screen. So anything going downwards is, in, in, is an increase in Y. And anything going to the right hand side of the screen is an increase in X. So since we want Y to go up, we want Y to get closer to 0. Or uh, not closer to 0, but just less. So it's going to go up. And we're going to create this for the rest of the keys as well. So, so W. A S D. So A is going to the left, so we want to decrease uh, the X. And S is going down, so we want to increase the Y. And then D is going to the right, so we want to increase the X. So that should be good. Uh, so this will update our guy. Right, that is pretty much what we want. So if we go to our game and we change the object, so if object we turn we change it to man, and we change this to man. Let's see what happens. How are we doing on time? Uh, okay, we're running a little bit short on time. See, now when I press the WSD keys, look, our guy moves around. And I'm not sure if I can go over having the guy look towards me. I might. But, you know what? I'm just going to end it here. So. Uh, thank you for watching, I would appreciate a thumbs up, and see you in the next tutorial.